record on this. Okay, you should see the recording. Yes. Yeah. Alert. Just up. Okay. Three, two, one. <laughs> uh, hi, everybody. My name is Phil. I'd like to welcome you to Netflix and Phil. And today I have a very special guest. His name is Paul Farrell. And I'll, instead of me telling you what he does, uh, I'll go ahead and turn it over to you, Paul. And please share with our audience uh, about the work that you do. Uh, yeah, well, thank you for having me on. Um, you know, I've I've talked to you on Twitter for a great, I, well, for a long time. I feel like I for, feel like it's been at least a year, if not longer. And yeah, every time it's, you post, yeah, every time you post, like it was pre-pandemic. I remember, and you. Oh yeah. What I love, Paul, is that you're just a connoisseur of film, and you would always take a selfie pre uh, before uh, a screening and oh, yes. whatever guest you had with you. And I would always comment, go ahead, keep going. <laughs> yeah, no, no, for sure. Um, and it's, it's always fun to talk to Twitter friends, like in a video setting or just on a podcast or something, because you, sure. you, you know, there's always that veil between you and the Twitter verse. So it's fun to kind of create a real connection between it it's very weird and honestly i appreciate your your willingness to come on because i've approached other people who are a little shy about this and i try to make it as comfortable as possible so i appreciate your your indulging me so, <laughs> no no i'm uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm always open to a conversation with a fellow uh, or <laughs> fan or film fan or just anything so I do, I do a couple different things. Um, I have uh, a column uh, that I do on Bloody Disgusting um, called Hammer Factory. Uh, so that's one of the things I probably put um, some of the most time and effort into. Um, it, it's basically, so for those who don't know, Scream Factory uh, has been putting out a lot of Hammer films. Hammer being the, the British uh, studio that existed in the late 40s through kind of the mid to late 70s. Um, and, you know, while they made films across all different genres, what they're sort of known for is horror and gothic horror. Right. Um, you know, most commonly people associate them with the Dracula film starring Christopher Lee or the Frankenstein film starring Peter Cushing. Um, of course, they they did a lot more than that, but that's kind of what gets elevated to the top. Um, so <laughs> I take a look at the uh, specifically the movies that Screen Factory has released. And then I do sort of a breakdown of the context of the time they were made, a little bit of a review for the film. I run through kind of what the features are providing and then sort of a, an overall take on the movie and its uh, legacy in horror. Um, and I do that monthly. Uh, and I think I'm on like my 14th or 15th month of doing that. So there's a good backlog at this point. That's awesome. So um, before we get too far ahead, you're at Paul is great 2000 on Twitter and all yeah. his, all his <laughs> socials are there. Uh, bloody disgusting, which he contributes to now, correct me if I'm wrong. Hasn't didn't hammer do the latest uh, woman in black. I mean, they're still an entity. They're like still producing stuff, right? Yes. Yeah, they are. Oddly enough, their most recent film was the lodge. Oh which, my gosh. <laughs> yeah. Like I'll be a hundred percent honest does not feel anything like what i would call a hammer film um <laughs> however you know you you brought up woman in black with <laughs> daniel radcliffe and it's uh yeah. and then there was a sequel as well that that very much does feel like a modern day hammer film it, it's um, very gothic in tone and it's one of my comfort horror movies it's one of those that i like to put on every so often and just kind of tune out how did you feel about the sequel to that to woman in black um i didn't I didn't hate it, but I I also didn't sort of, it, it didn't make a huge impression when I saw it, I'll be honest. So it's like, mm -hmm. I've seen it, but I don't, you know, it didn't really stick with me like maybe the first one did a little bit. Um, well, but I would be interested in revisiting it, <laughs> you know, because it's it's been a minute since I checked it out. Same here. And I think for context, I think I saw it. There's this argument, I guess, to be said, I saw Woman in Black in the theaters and I, yeah. I enjoyed it. And, it, you know, when something's screened in a movie theater, it, I think it's just that much more impactful. The sequel, I think I saw on television, you know, <laughs> and but again, you're right. I thought it was very forgettable. I um, don't recall much about it, but I did like Daniel Radcliffe in the original film. Now, The Lodge, however... I'm notorious for starting movies and not finishing them. So I did not finish the launch. Ah, okay. But, 
but I didn't realize. That's an interesting one not to finish too. Yeah, I didn't realize. Now, so so context (laughs) for our for our viewers, um, isn't this the one where there's the blended family and a new mother in the picture? Am I speaking to the right? Okay. Yeah. Um, Yeah. And that said, I was intrigued, but I guess not intrigued enough to finish it. (laughs) It's you know the lodge is um it's a very slow burn. Uh, but it's also, I don't know. I felt like, cause it was made by the same team that did, um, good night, mommy. Um, <gasps> okay. Which I did finish. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah. So it, it has, it has that kind of like dark sort of psychological element to it. There's also a sense of like a twist to the story that, um, sort of hinges a lot hinges on, which I don't always love i think i think sometimes when a movie puts like too much stock in its twist then it becomes all about that plot point and not about everything else the movie's doing right. however i thought in the lodge it worked really well I, the lodge was a movie i was a big fan of but i also saw it in there, there's a lot of talk on twitter right now about like festival goggles and like when you're at a festival you know you you tend to like you know these 10 people see this movie and they say it's the greatest movie ever and then six months later it comes out and everyone's like oh it was fine and some of that is because of expectations some of that is because like we said when you see a movie in the perfect environment it sort of elevates how you feel about it so i saw the lodge uh at fantastic fest in 2019 i guess i love doing like little selfies before right watching (laughs) Um, I don't know why it was just like a weird thing I was doing. Um, it was a phase. I don't know. <laughs> it was a phase. I'll, I'll probably go back to it though. I'm not going to lie. Um, well, <laughs> when I eventually return to theaters. Yes, but, like, exactly. That was the first movie for the entire festival where I didn't have like someone I knew with me. Like every other movie, I just managed to somehow finagle a situation where I had like two or three people that like I was familiar with either on Twitter or that I had just met at the festival. So this was the first one where I sat down and like, I didn't know anybody in the theater Mm. and it's, it's, so I was kind of already feeling a little isolated. And then you have this movie, which is incredibly isolating and very dark and very uh, emotionally challenging. Um, And it just, I I was in the exact right headspace to watch it. I was with a good crowd. Um, And yeah, I, I really enjoyed it. Um, Now, having said that, I haven't revisited it since the festival. So I'd be interested to see how it plays at home, you know, now a couple of years removed from it, but I did think it was a, a pretty interesting emotional journey. That said, you've reminded me of a movie that I don't know that you've seen, but I imagine you probably have. It's called um, Relic that came out recently. Yeah. I assume you're talking about the, like the Relic um, about the, the woman with uh Alzheimer's yes. and sort of her decaying home as opposed yes. to the the 90s monster movie really yeah it's uh yeah which again too I love the 90s monster oh movie. yeah no that's a great movie too uh, right? um, <laughs> which I saw in the theater when I was much much younger but <laughs> Emily Mortimer is that right yes yeah the Emily Mortimer um uh-huh. and who's her daughter I was it was you about two seconds robin nevin played the mother and bella and bella heathcote bella heathcote i thought it was a very strong cast and i really mm. like emily mortimer i'm curious as to what your feelings were about that movie i so i loved relic um i was really lucky i managed to get a screener of that film like several months before it came out and did a review for um there's a couple sites there's another site i write for called scriptophobics Mm -hmm. um i did a column for them for many years uh called uh written in blood and it was about like effects and horror films and stuff um but anyway yeah so i watched that movie with my wife and it just it really blew me away um it's the best kind of like emotional uh sort of allegorical horror um mm-hmm. i i think you're already deal. i mean anytime you have a movie where you could just make a really compelling drama out of it uh-huh. regardless of the horror elements like yes. you have a winner on your hands and and relic's one of those movies where like even if there was no horror to it it would be an incredibly compelling experience just from the performances and the writing and you know, okay. and watching these these three generation of women struggle with losing touch with the 
sort of generation that came before them. Yeah. Um, and th- yeah, and then when you take the house and you make that the decay in the home a metaphor for the memory loss, um, you know, like the idea that a familiar, comforting, calming thing can become the enemy because it's no longer familiar to you. Uh, the director of that movie uh, manifested that stuff visually so incredibly well um, that it really stuck with me and was very haunting. So yeah, I, I, I love that movie. I thought it was great. I did too. There was so much kind of, and it's one that I've visited, visited time and time again, because it is so there's things you miss the first time and you can't tell if what's going on is supernatural, supernatural. It's almost like mystical. What, what kind of freaked yeah. me out is there's um, like a subplot or a moment where they refer to a guest home behind the mother's uh, main residence. And there's something going on back there. And it's yeah. all just very weird. <laughs> so if I could, so one thing that I did revisit recently, and I know it's probably uh, some something that anybody who loves horror is very familiar with. Uh, I noticed your hat. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, I just reinvested in Jaws recently. And it had Ooh. been a long time. And again, I seen it time and time and time again but i had a long dry spell where i hadn't watched it and then i think i got it on 4k or something i'm like let's check this bad boy out again i mean you know there's there's arguments about this but pretty much started the whole like summer blockbuster trend um and it it kind of changed the way studios thought about movies and horror too you know exorcist and jaws together again every like decade or so like Hollywood has to be reminded that horror can like bring in the numbers you know like sort of like it chapter one it's like oh like the studios are also surprised that 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 movie made you know 120 million dollars in its you know first 10 days or something and and all horror fans are like yeah of course like (laughs) make make a big horror movie invest in it you know people are going to come see it Um, but yeah no I love I love Jaws. Jaws is amazing and the fan base I think for horror is very devoted and um, I haven't been to many conventions or anything, but I think you're right. Horror has every few years a renaissance and personally, I'm looking forward to Halloween kills and the next scream installment. I tend to appreciate teen slasher fair, but I, my second favorite genre is um, anything to do with supernatural plots, ghosts, and the like. What about you? Yeah, no, I mean, um, uh, definitely excited for Halloween Kills. Uh, that's a movie um, that I've been, I mean, Halloween is a franchise very near and dear to my heart. Um, it was one of the first horror franchises I kind of fell in love with, if not the first. Um, it was yeah. either that or Romero's Dead trilogy. Um, right. But but yeah, so I mean, you know, I'm I'm kind of a diehard Michael Myers guy. So anytime something new involving that universe comes out, I'm I'm, I'm all in 100%. Um, but Excellent. yeah, no, I think I think we are. I mean, obviously, this October is is huge for franchise horror. I mean, we're getting we're getting new Chucky, we're getting new Leatherface, we're getting new Myers, we got new Candyman. Um, you know, it, there, there's so much contemporary reissuing of classic stuff right now um and i think that that's because horror has very much been bleeding ever more into the zeitgeist in the last five six years you know it's were it not for the pandemic i think we would only see this renaissance growing bigger um i think that obviously you know it hurt a lot of things in hollywood but um that was one of the casualties was was horror sort of burgeoning i don't want to say comeback um uh, you know because that makes it sound like it ever went away of course it didn't but i think of the eyes of producers and the box office receipts and things like that but it was definitely cool to see Candyman like get a big opening weekend you know like for all things considered right and so then this is where i ask i have not seen it but i've seen very conflicting reviews or people reporting back about their feelings about it and i personally am a fan of not only the original, but there was a sequel, um, and it had a tagline: "Farewell, Farewell to, to the, the Flesh." Farewell yeah. to the Flesh. Yeah. And there's there's a third one. Day right, I know. And the third one, kind of, <laughs> I don't know. We I don't know if we should mention it, but no, yeah, 
<laughs> it's no good. Um, which is okay. fine. I, I'm, I'm. Look, I, I'm. As I said, I'm a Halloween fan, and I love right. all those movies. So if I can love all the Halloween sequels, I really don't have a lot of room to like, you know, go against other people's horror franchise sequels. But however, did you see the new Candyman? I so I haven't been back to the theater yet. Um, okay. I so I haven't seen it yet. Uh, the, the second it hits VOD, I will I will watch it. Um, but yeah, I I've, I've been you know with my kids and everything. Yeah. I've been kind of cautious. Uh, I totally understand. Now I like that. I admire people. Now I just was at a brunch and there were people there and they were packed in and I kind of I don't know if I should say this and post it online, but I've <laughs> kind of. Um, and more and more choosing to kind of get out more. But like you, I've been yeah. very cautious. Personally, I have not been back to the theater. But chances are, if you do go, say, to a matinee, et cetera, so forth, I don't think there's anybody in those theaters yeah, right now. You're, Maybe you're I have it wrong. Right. But, yeah, no, you're you're probably right. I, I'm sure in the next couple months, I'll probably get back out there yeah um halloween kills might get me in a seat um, well let's make a pact either yeah. either you and i go see it in in a theater or i'm coming to you and we're <laughs> and we're taking a selfie and we're posting it to Twitter. Right. i'll do it i'll do it because yeah. i i have to see halloween kills i mean well yeah i can't if like me sitting at home knowing it's out there and i could no. see it will drive me insane i can't so. foresee that you would sit <laughs> home um so that said so i know we're getting another chapter which was delayed a year i am very excited i've enjoyed what i've seen from the trailer and then in another year year's time we're getting what is i presume is the finale and that's it or we don't know but what are you what are your thoughts well i mean <laughs> the way i look at it is for example like we're watching a trilogy right now starring jamie lee curtis as laurie strode who was killed in halloween resurrection right, right. so like endings don't matter in a, in a long running franchise. What, what it is to me is sort of a, an acceptance of a kind of multiverse situation where yeah. every, every once in a while, a new filmmaker or creative or studio can sort of enter into a franchise, take the mythos that's there and concoct their own vision of what that could be. So I think the the current trilogy will end with Halloween ends. And I think that probably will be the last time we see Jamie Lee Curtis in a Halloween movie. I think that's really, you know, based on where she's at in her life and, yeah. and the fact that she's doing three of these, like, I think that's really her swan song. Um, I do not think it'll be the end of Michael Myers. Um, but having said that, I, I think it would be cool if Blumhouse took a risk and did something experimental, given that they have the rights to the Halloween franchise name, and maybe did something akin to Halloween three season of the witch, where, you know, John Carpenter's original intent was, well, let's make this an anthology thing. You're right. Um, You're absolutely right. And anthologies are, are kind of big right now on television. And I heard rumor and correct me if I'm wrong, that Halloween was being developed to be a series of some sort, or I don't know if you there's rumblings. Yeah, yeah. Blumhouse is dabbling in the TV space, obviously with um, the purge. There's a couple other projects coming out. Um, they basically, a lot of their into the dark movie series on Hulu is for all intents and purposes, a masters of horror type TV show in my right. eyes. Um, and certainly what they're doing with Amazon, uh, with the Ho House of Blum or whatever, um, is is kind of along those same lines, albeit with slightly bigger budgets from what I hear and what I've seen. Um, so I would not be surprised if they attempted to take something like Halloween and turn it into to that. But I don't know. To me, given the amount of money uh, that Halloween 2018 brought in, uh, it, it would be kind of silly financially to not try to do something on a theatrical scale with with the property um but but like to make a michael myers movie a year after halloween ends would be counterproductive i think i think it would undermine you know what they're attempting to do i think you're right i think it'll be like another <clears throat> five to six years yeah. if they i create, think there'll be a break yeah i think there will be a break and if they do a televised something or another i would look forward to that i think maybe 
that would be new mo- a new audience they could mine and just new generation. If well, they and, and you know, they did that with Scream. Mm-hmm. Um, and they just went in a totally different direction with it. They took the tone of the Scream movies and planted it into a show. Um, it's not about Billy Loomis. It's not about these characters, you know, Nev Campbell, Sydney, but it's it's kind of when you watch that show, um, you know, especially the first like two, the first two seasons um, really do work pretty well. And I wouldn't be upset if they did something like that. It would be great for Friday the 13th. I think, I think Friday the 13th, um, it's, okay. it's it, it would, it would be so easy to, to make a show out of that because it's such a simple premise. And, um, and we talked this earlier. It's so Gothic that you could put in a ton of characters, layers, you know, just weird kind of, you know, you always have the soothsayer who's always, you know, telling people about the imminent evil, you know, you could, you could populate it with so many characters that in like all, it would almost be like a Twin Peaks kind of franchise in a sense. Yeah. Because, yeah. Yeah. You know, remote areas and cabins and woods, I think are good material. Now, as for Halloween, I don't know how you could stretch that out into like an episode. I don't, I don't know. know. Yeah. Maybe it's, there, I, but. it's, it's, it's hard to say. I think, I think you'd have to reinvent the story a little bit. Um, mm-hmm. However, I think the trouble with making it a show akin to something like Scream is that, you know, Scream's a franchise where every movie has a different killer. It's the same costume, but it's a different person. Um, You know, Halloween's a franchise where it's always the same person. (laughs) You know, Michael Myers is always the killer. So to do a show where the killer isn't Michael Myers would would be pretty tough. So you kind of, I don't know. I don't know how they would how they would do that in a way that would be overly satisfying but at the same time like i would probably watch it 